Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Finally, the Chanel Holiday 2015 collection has hit the UK. I picked up a few pieces uh, yesterday in the Covent Garden store. I'm not sure it's in all the concessions yet. I think that might be towards the end of this week, but they certainly have it in the standalone um, boutiques for cosmetics in the UK. So it's, as usual, quite a big collection. Um, you've probably heard it's called the Rouge Noir collection here in the UK uh, in memory of 20 years of the iconic polish. Forgive my horrible nail there. I have just removed um, quite a dingy looking polish because I'm going to demonstrate and repaint my nails, but that's not looking too good at the moment. Anyway, uh, Rouge Noir You've probably heard me before, my all-time favourite nail polish. It's the only nail polish, I think, where I have gone through more than one bottle um, and repurchased um, pretty much since it was first launched, unbelievably, 20 years ago. Um, I won't go into all the kind of history of it, but uh, for American viewers, of course, it's called Vamp in the United States. Um Rouge Noir here. I don't know if back 20 years ago they were exactly the same polish. Although they both have number 18, um, they're not the same polish now from the photographs I've seen of Vamp in this United States release. It has the micro shimmer, which the true Rouge Noir, which is just a black and red, does not have. Um, now, I haven't got Vamp in my collection. I should say this isn't a recent purchase. This is part of, uh, well, I've had it for a while. Uh, Rouge Noir is always part of the permanent Chanel nail polish collection, as far as I'm aware, except when it was sold out in the early days, always has been since its launch. I suspect always will be because it's so classic. Um, what I do have is um, quite an old bottle of Very Vamp, which has a gold micro shimmer. And you can see, you know, next to each other, they're very, very different. Um, it's not just the micro shimmer. The um, red of this is much more brown than the kind of blackened red of Rouge Noir. Um, and it looks to me as if the vamp that's released at the moment in the States has a kind of silver rather than gold micro shimmer, although I stand to be corrected about that. I'd love to get my hands on a bottle of vamp, but with our um, import restrictions here in the UK, that's not going to happen. So anyway, um, that's being re-promoted in the UK and the whole collection fits round the Rouge Noir theme. There are two limited edition polishes. One of them is Rose Fusion, um, which is a beautiful chromed, pearlized, pinky beige. Um, I thought when I saw the pictures, it was going to be very similar to Rose Moire, which I think was released last year or the year before. But as you can see, Rose Moire is very much um, pinker. So is Violette, um, another polish like that. Looking at my stash, the nearest to Rose Fusion, and I will try them out if we have time later, is um, Quartz which is very close indeed, but is a little um, more taupey rather than with the pink red um, tone to it. Quartz is a beautiful polish, uh, one of my favourites, and I know a lot of people like it. So Rose Fusion, which I haven't tried on yet, um, but will do, um, is likely to be a favourite too. It's limited edition, so I got one of those. And then there's the Top Coat Rouge Noir, which... Um, settles into kind of stripes in the bottle um, but basically it's a translucent red with gold sparkles you can see they settle very much um, and distribute well now I did put a coat of this over the polish I was wearing yesterday um, and I can report that the glitter which is very clunky but it spreads with ease over the finger um, you can't see the red colour in truth. So this top coat is no different on the fingers than any number of um, 
quality glitter top coats like um, Dior's Golden Shock, for example. Um, so in my opinion, if you collect, you're going to get it. And it looks very pretty in the bottle. But the truth is, it's no different from a lot of glitter polishes. Um, I will say that when you apply it and kind of run your finger over it when it's dried, the glitter doesn't um, stand out at all. It's very smooth. And that caused me to hope that it would be easier to remove than some glitter polishes are. They're usually very tough to get off. You really have to scrub um, to, to remove the glitter. But when I removed it um, this morning, it, it was tough. I mean, you had to scrub as much as any glitter polish. So in that sense, no better than any others. Um, so you might want to think about that. Anyway, on to the surrounding products. Um, one of the stars of the show is the eye palette, and I didn't get it. Um, you've heard me, if you looked at my, I think my favourites, I might not have put that up yet actually, talk about how similar the palette looked to a palette from a couple of years ago. In fact, 2012 holiday edition palette was called Harmonie du Soir, and this is it. And I was so convinced that they were semi-dupes that I took this in with me to the shop to try them out side by side. Now, they're not dupes. Um, what are the differences? Well, first of all, the positives. This one, Armini du Soir, and the current one um, are a different formula from the ordinary Tise, although the Tise is have a perfectly nice formula now. These are much more creamy. They last really, really well. I've used this palette quite a lot, even though some of the quilting's still there. And it's still not dried out. It's still soft, um, spreadable, blendable, um, really good quality. And we're talking since 2012. So um, th the current palette is just like this in consistency. Um, what are the differences? The primary differences are these two colours. The gold in this year is a much more um, warm-toned, true um, gold than this, which is a bit paler, believe it or not. So it's an absolutely full-on, almost a lame type gold, which would be beautiful for a party look, but quite hard to wear very often unless you go for very dramatic eye looks, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it didn't appear to have a lot of fallout swatching on the hand. Always difficult to tell whether it'll be different on the eye. Um, but it seemed very promising, very smooth, and literally giving this almost foiled effect. Very, very pretty. If anything was going to make me buy the palette, it would have been that gold. Um, this colour here, on the other hand, is a much darker um, blackened red version like the Rouge Noir in this year's palette, which I personally would find harder to wear. So that wasn't an attraction for me. The um, pink colour, which looks very similar in the pan, swatches much lighter, more silvery than the slightly um, pearlized pink, which I find very pretty. And the taupe colour is uh, a bit darker, more like a fawn. Um, perfectly nice shadow. Chanel do great taupes, um, but not that remarkable. So all in all, I decided to give the palette a miss. And if you have um, Armini du Soir, you might choose to do the same, but it's a very nice palette. So what did I get? Um, I went for the um, Illusion d'Ambre, which is called Rouge Noir. Um, as you might expect. Oop. Very, very dark, true Rouge Noir in the pot. The usual consistency. Very, very beautiful on the finger. Um, blends out to a kind of black with um, micro shimmer giving it that red effect. I haven't worn it on the eye yet, but I can see it making a very dramatic look. I took in with me Dia Passon, thinking they might be similar. Um, but you can see Dia Passon is, and by the way, look what's happened. They do this sometimes. Um, no matter how tightly you screw on the pot, it's still usable. Still the most beautiful colour, Dia Passon. Um, much, much lighter 
and more purpley. So um, they're definitely uh, different enough to justify getting. And if you like Dear Passant, I think you're going to love the Rouge Noir. Um, there are two mascaras in the volume uh, set, uh, black and a rouge noir. I'm not going to open it because I want to uh, keep it without opening it to the air, but I'd taken in um, this one, which is an old seasonal one that I'm using at the moment called Prune, and it's very, very similar. I'm putting, I put them next to each other, the testers, and the rouge noir is a tiny bit darker, um, but very much in the same um, colour range as prune uh, and to be honest they're not going to look any different unless you have absolutely fair lashes so uh, I think they'll be a very nice effect. Two eye pencils, um, one I'm already regretting not getting, I didn't get it because it was the sharpener type rather than the uh, automatic stilos that I love so much but it was a very very lamade gold which in Thinking about it afterwards, I think would go brilliantly with this. So I may go out and get it. The other one is called Rouge Noir, but the tester they had was actually a lip liner and they didn't actually have it in stock. So I think that was a mistake um, and they just haven't got it in yet. Um, so I didn't get those. Two Glossomers, uh, what, both limited edition. One, a very, very pale um, pink that didn't show up as anything. And then this gorgeous one in the tube, which is Entisel, et, Etincel. I don't know what that means. Now, in truth, when you put it on, it's pretty colourless. Well, just a bit pinky. Um, on my lips, it doesn't look anything other than shiny, but it's just so pretty, so partyish in the um, the tube. Uh, there's one so-called blusher. Now, this is interesting. Coup de Minuit, called a highlighting blush. First interesting point, if you're familiar with the Chanel blushes, they normally have a very strong rose scent, which I like, but this one doesn't have any scent at all. Um, it's very, very pale in the pan, and even paler on the swatch. It's, in truth just a medium toned highlighter. Um, the nearest blush, I think, or I thought, would be Stardust, again from a few years ago, which is very, very pale as well, quite glittery. I do like it in the evening. But in fact, Stardust shows up on my cheeks far more than uh, Coup de Minuit, uh, which is definitely, for me, just a highlighter. And a fairly moderate one. I got it on today with a bit of bronzer and then put this on top. And it's a pretty sheen, but, you know, nothing too dramatic. I know a lot of people have said this is their favourite. A lot of people, blogs I've read, have said this is their favourite out of the whole collection. I have to say, as highlighters go, um, it's pretty, but, you know, it, it, it's not anything like my favourite. So... If you like a, a fairly subtle highlighter, um, this is a nice one. It's not got loads of fallout or anything like that. But it's certainly not a blush, even for the palest of skins. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure it's that extraordinary. There are three lipsticks. Um, a velvet, which is a beautiful raspberry, um, which I was tempted by, but similar to things I've got and then two Rouge Allure, one a very, very pale, um, shiny shell pink that barely showed up on me. And the other meant to be uh, Rouge Noir. It wasn't Rouge Noir. I can't remember what it was called, but, you know, in that darkened plum um, range, um, which I passed on those. So... Um, plenty there to choose from. Uh, I haven't had time to put the polish on and this is too long for me to do that but I will probably let you know how some of these work out in a bit more detail when I've had a chance to try them. Um, but until then, bye for now.